very much indeed for introduction. I'm delighted we're here in Beijing for this Leading Minds event. I must tell you, it's always exciting to come to China. Things change all the time. The one thing that never changes is the traffic. The traffic <laughs> never changes, and indeed the position of the cars never seems to change either. Now, what are China's policies? Well, China's policies, uh, as far as I can interpret them, are clear that the world uh, is, it's, the international monetary system is not a happy place with the dollar dominating as it is, has, has been for so many years since the war. Uh, and uh, therefore, in particular, one should try to expand the role of the special drawing rights uh, and the role of the RMB. China, and not only China, not only China, France, shares some of these views, is that if you're holding a lot of dollar reserves, as China does, of course, uh, the exchange rate of the dollar makes a big difference to your international investment position, that the key currency status of the dollar uh, is a factor that uh, has led to the creation of global imbalances, current account, wide current account surpluses and deficits. Also, there is a geopolitical issue. And it's, it's never been hidden as far as the dollar is concerned, and it shouldn't be hidden as far as the RMB is concerned. Having uh, the issuing a key currency in the international system uh, gives you soft power, and maybe even hard power. I think the main disadvantage, perhaps, uh, is, that, uh, is one, one that we saw in the crisis, that uh, when uh, there is a big international disturbance, money flows straight into the home of the key currency, and that pushes up its exchange rate. What's different now from the past? The main difference is that trade is no longer the main source of uh, uh, you know, backing, as, as you like, if you like, for the international currency. It's all about finance and the financial sector. You need legal certainty. You need foreign users of the RMB to know that a transaction will be uh, is, is underpinned by a legal agreement, a contract that can be enforced and be enforced without hassle by well-functioning commercial courts. And is China ready, is China willing to play that world banker role of maturity transformation uh, that substitutes for the uh, financial institutions in, uh, in, in countries where they're not very well developed and where you need that kind of uh, external, if you like, intermediation. The Chinese government claim they, they will let a market to play a decisive role in resources allocation, I'm quoting. Uh, so how do you see that? Mm -hmm. We are very familiar with the areas where markets need to be regulated, where there are externalities, where there are uh, competition issues. Uh, uh, where there, is, uh, there are pollution issues, uh, and so forth. Regulation, sometimes taxation, is the appropriate way to deal with these, these things. As far as intervention in the economy is concerned, yeah, my, my favorite intervention would be to get, get closed down some of the zombie enterprises. <laughs> it requires uh, financial support for the people who are put out of jobs. And I understand that it's proposed that 100 billion uh, RMB, yeah. RMB be put into uh, and precisely that kind of financial support yeah. this year. And that, it seems to me, is a very promising realization that, you know, you've got to get rid of some of these unproductive, inefficient activities. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. And uh, thank you for your participation in our first Beijing event of Leading Minds. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.